In this video, I'm going to show you how to set custom ASCII doc attributes in the ASCII Doctor JS Live Preview extension, which is available for Firefox, Chromium, and Chrome. By doing so, you'll be able to properly preview your content when you use the extension and avoid setting attributes directly in your ASCII doc content unnecessarily or other kinds of hacks. As a bit of background, I write a lot of ASCII doc content. And while generally I would know if I've made a mistake in the content that I've written just by reading it, I won't always know if it renders correctly or quite as I'd like. So as you can sort of see here, to preview ASCII doc content, I use the ASCII doctor JS live preview extension to know for certain. You can see here that I have Vim open on the right with the ASCII doc source of a file that I'm working on. And on the left, I have Firefox open and I have the ASCII Doctor JS preview extension uh, installed and enabled, which then takes the content and renders it as HTML. Now, just as a little bit of proof, if I then disable that, you can see it pops back to raw ASCII doc. But if I then enable that again, it'll then turn back into HTML quite quickly. Actually, I'm looking at two different files I see. <laughs> uh, oh, no, 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 I'm not. I was almost embarrassed for a second. Anyway, I added the extension to my workflow some months ago as my editor of choice, Vim here. Unlike other editors such as Sublime Text and Atom and Visual Studio Code can't integrate preview support natively. Now there are other cases when you might want to have the preview plugin, but that's just one particular case. But to the heart of why I'm creating this video, because up until recently, I only used the extension to review the ASCII doc text changes such as headers, say top level headers, second level headers, quotes, links, italicization, lists, and so forth. I didn't worry about any other facets such as included images and example files. However, as I've come to rely on the live preview extension loads more to the point that I use it actually almost daily, I'm now having to review all the content. You know, so images, included examples, various other assets, not just the text. And I found that by default, there were little things that the extension wouldn't render, such as images and examples. And it makes sense as we'll see in just a second. So let's work through an example. If I scroll down and we come down here, you can see here that we have some alt text for an image that should be rendered, but the image isn't there. The reason for that is by default, the images DIR attribute isn't set and naturally it couldn't be because the preview extension could render any content. So how could you apply a default value? It would probably be limiting. So what I'm gonna do is now set that attribute so that the images for this content here can be found by the preview plugin. If I come down here, uh, right click on the preview icon and then click manage extension. And you can see here we come to the configuration and overview panel for the extension. By default, we're on the details pane, but I'm gonna to change to the preferences pane. And here, the first option that you can set is custom attributes. In here, you can enter a series of space separated key value attribute pairs for any attribute that you would want to set or unset. When set, the attributes are then available to any ASCII doc content which the extension renders from that point on. And before I go too much further, if you're not too familiar with ASCII doc attributes, make sure that you check out the ASCII doc user manual, which covers attributes in great detail. What they are, what they're for, why you would use them, and how they generally are an excellent feature of ASCII doc. Now let's pop back to configure the plugin. I keep saying plugin, I mean to keep saying extension consistently. Anyway, so in this case, what I have to do is set the images DIR attribute. And I've had this from before because it's a rather long value in this case. And what that does is set the base path in the file system for where images are located in your text. So I've put that in there and you note that if you were quick off the mark and, and looked over here, you would have seen that the value was auto saved just to kind of exemplify that again i'll change that you can see a very quick animation there which goes to a tick put that back you can see there so i don't have to click or scroll right down to the bottom to click any 
OK, Apply or Save buttons. It's just done for us, a very handy feature. Now with that set, it'll be able to find or it'll have available the base path for the images in my content. If I scroll down here, I believe you'll see here, I've got my image directive and it references a file called middleware.jpg. And that's located in the base of this directory here. I note I also had experimental set to true. I don't need that. Must have been from an earlier thing I was working on. So I'll remove that. Now naturally, you can then set in here any other attribute that you would need, that you would want, whether that's a predefined one, a built-in one, or one specific to your text. But since I've set that, I'll now pop back to my content. Note here again that the image was broken. If I then reload that, you can see now that the image is available looking beautiful and amazing. And just as I covered a bit before, if you need to set any other attributes, just follow this process, reload your content, and the extension will then render your ASCII.content exactly as you would expect. If you've been having any issues kind of wondering why the extension didn't render your content exactly as it should have, perhaps this is the answer for you. And I hope that it is. As always, if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to know about more content when it's released on the channel, please subscribe. I'd love to know what you think of the, of the extension, so please let me know down below in the comments. And you'll find links, as always, to anything and everything that I've covered here in the notes for the video as well. And I will see you a future software development with Matt video.